Every month, hundreds of sick and hurting people who come to Albuquerque Hospital emergency rooms seeking help never get it. The hospitals don't turn them away. What happens is the sick people often just get sick of waiting. How sick is the system? Here's News 13 investigative reporter Larry Barker. Unfortunately, we have times and days um, where patients end up waiting for long, long periods of time. Probably the number one thing that will upset patients is if they have to wait a long time before they can see us. If you're sick, they should take care of you. I was not taken care of. I was shoved aside. What happened to this Albuquerque grandmother should not happen to anyone. And I got a pain in my chest and it took me to the floor. I could not breathe. She was rushed by ambulance to a private hospital and put on an IV. They wheeled me out to the waiting room and I got up and I sat in a chair. And there she sat. How are you feeling? Rotten. I was feeling very bad, very tired. I was having a little trouble breathing and I just sat there. She waited hours, wondering. Is someone going to help me? After six hours, she had had enough. I got up and told them I was going home and they talked to me into staying some more. So I stayed there probably another hour. And then I got up and I told them, take the IVs out, I'm going home. What happened that day is not an isolated incident. In fact, it's a daily occurrence. Hospital emergency rooms across New Mexico are so overcrowded that patients routinely wait hours to see a doctor. Sometimes the wait can be a half day or more. So quality of health care is directly related to ER wait times. Dr. Tony Salazar is with the American College of Emergency Physicians. We know that the longer a patient has to wait in an emergency department, the uh, increased likelihood of an adverse event for that patient. To understand the magnitude of this problem, you need to go behind the scenes. On average, some 240 patients come to the University of New Mexico Hospital ER every day. Dr. Steve McLaughlin chairs UNM's Department of Emergency Medicine. Why does somebody leave an emergency room without being seen by a doctor? Number one reason is they wait too long. We know very directly that the longer patients wait, the more likely they are to leave. As a publicly funded teaching hospital and New Mexico's only level one trauma center, UNMH is the state's busiest emergency room. As such, about 12% of the patients who seek care here leave without treatment due to lengthy wait times. In August, 645 patients gave up after waiting too long in the ER. April 4th last year was a particularly bad day. The ER was so crowded that 56 patients in the waiting room walked out. On May 9th, 22% of the adult patients seeking medical care left the ER without seeing a doctor. Why does it happen? Why can't you see people on a timely basis? It comes down to the fact that the number of, of folks that, that we need to take care of that are showing up and asking for our services is higher than our capacity to take care of those patients. Consider a typical day, 50 incoming ambulances, medevac helicopters, hundreds of sick people, including dozens critically ill, all converging here, many at the same time. There are accident victims, broken bones, stomach aches and heart attacks. The sickest patients with life-threatening conditions will be seen within minutes, but those less critically ill will have to wait. On this day, the wait was four and a half hours. It's not just UNM. Every hospital ER in America wrestles with the same problem, severe overcrowding. To draw attention to this healthcare crisis, UNMH voluntarily shared with News 13 internal tracking data reflecting actual patient wait times. It's the good, the bad, and the very bad. Consider last August. For those patients with serious but not life-threatening symptoms like broken bones and abdominal pain, the average wait time was under two hours. However, some had to wait up to 11 hours. And for patients with less severe symptoms like back pain, the average wait was less than three hours. However, some patients had to endure up to 16 hours in the waiting room. Is it acceptable for a sick person, whether it be a stomach ache or a broken arm or a sprained ankle, 
for them, anybody, to sit in the waiting room for eight hours or more. Well, I would say um, it's absolutely not what we're striving for. Is it acceptable? You know, that's a hard question. It's reality. I mean, it's the reality given the healthcare system that we're in. The reality for private hospitals is equally challenging. For example, Albuquerque's largest private hospital is Presbyterian. In an average month, Presbyterian's ER sees about 2,000 fewer patients than UNM. However, fewer patients doesn't necessarily mean shorter wait times. Anywhere you have doctors, nurses, and techs working 24-7 saving lives, there will be patients forced to endure hours waiting for treatment. Dr. Darren Schaefer is Presbyterian's ER medical director. A lot of times it comes down to that we have to see the sickest patients first. Um, and when patients present a triage, they're evaluated uh, and it's determined essentially whether they're able to safely wait or not. And the challenge is we can sometimes have three heart attacks happening at the exact same time in our emergency department and we have to focus on those patients first. According to data supplied by press, in November, most of the patients with serious symptoms like chest pains or mental confusion were seen quickly and had to wait less than two hours. More than half of the ER patients with less critical complaints like gastrointestinal bleeding only had to wait an hour. 88 sat for four hours, 39 for five, and 16 sat in the waiting room for six hours. In November, one patient's treatment was delayed for eight hours and another for nine. Last year, excessively long wait times resulted in some 1,500 patients leaving Presbyterian's ER without seeing a doctor. Although long wait times is an issue impacting every emergency room in the state, don't look to the New Mexico Hospital Association to weigh in. The organization's president, Jeff Dye, refused to be interviewed on the subject. Bo Beams, the organization's chairman did not return phone calls. That's really disappointing um, to hear that patients have come looking for care and that they've given up on trying to be seen. Presbyterian is actually better than the, the national benchmark uh, at around 1% in terms of left without being seen. Um, but that being said, we're still going to continue to improve. We're still not going to say that's acceptable until we don't have anyone that ever leaves without being seen. We're in this arena to take care of patients and we know that longer wait times is not good for our patients. I don't think anyone should have to wait. Uh, you know, I, I live in Albuquerque. I was born and raised here. Um, my mother lives here. I don't want her to have to come to any emergency department and have to wait. Nothing is acceptable in terms of a wait time. If you're at a C right now in wait times, yeah. do you think during your tenure here that you will see a B plus to an A minus? Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to plan on staying here until we get a handle on this. Larry Barker, KRQE News 13. What about Loveless? Well, they declined to participate in our review, and Christus St. Vincent in Santa Fe did not respond to our request for ER data.